to December 19th. It's a proper day we're doing. So how many days for, for Christmas? Why the six? <laughs> Depends how you count it. <laughs> if you count the vigil mass, then it's only five. But if it's not, it's a part six. It depends, you know. But um, one of the part I like this uh, here is that um, the boy grew up and the Lord blessed him. The spirit of the Lord steered him. The spirit of the Lord steered him. I like that word steering um, because um, that is the part that is missing in every person, you know. Uh, I just found out when I was reading Psalms, uh, ch chapter 80, there is a verse uh, in English, uh, steer up your power, O oh Lord. Steer up your power. Um, I like that word steer because, you know, because I drink coffee and honey and it says you have to steer it. You know, many of us have a hard time to, we don't know how to steer that power. We were, we were all given the power, yeah. We're all given because Sherry always had this uh, difficulty. You know, she put the honey in the first in the coffee, and she gave it to me. And he said, "Did you put the honey in there? Because I don't taste honey." Really, they didn't steal it. So I realized that some, sometimes we really don't realize. You know, if you don't pay attention to the power of God, I think that's what most of the people are experiencing. It they they do not steering the power of the Lord. We all have the power of the Lord. We know that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But not everybody has still up the power of the Lord. If it is, it's completely different. We need to we need to know how to still. There is a word it says, no, that he neither drink, he drink, he will drink, he will drink neither wine nor strong drink. It's hard to preach in today's world because everybody drinks too much. No. <laughs> I mean, people who it's, a, it, it's hard to preach to people who have, you know, a congregation who speaks drinks, you know, like especially here it's very really common. Um, to, like in India, I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a you know, state, you know, in, in Kerala, that the priest, uh, they were chosen most of the time, you know, they, they, they're not allowed to drink and, and smoke. So it was kind of scandalizing for me when I came to seminary here. <laughs> that everybody is smoking and drinking. I was like, what is it? I was like, am I in the seminary here? So it, it scandalized me a little bit because you know it's not it's a cultural thing. But um, but it, we were not we were kind of uh, in a formation that we should not do that as a priest. But probably this comes from the Holy Scripture. So you know um, I do remember that uh, you know um, I, I getting used to here a little bit. And uh, you know, beer is not too bad. You know, have have beer, and and you know, when he started, you know, I could see that you know, my parents are not very much into these things. But remember, they're they're very strict as well. You know, they see the priest as a uh, not to have these kind of things. So um, I was remember one of the you know one of the priests who I went to a retreat, and he mentioned you know he said. Do you really want to steal up the Holy Spirit in you? I said, I would love to, because I, I really want, I really want the Holy Spirit to steal up. And he said one thing, then come stop drinking. You know, and I was like, really? I mean, it's common here, what is the big deal? And he said, a little sacrifice, a little mortification is good for you as a priest, and it helps you to grow in spirit. You know, I, I, I thought it was silly, um, but you know, um, I do remember that uh, you know, it was, I think it was one of the first trips that I was preaching to the young, younger ones that I met in this priest, very, very charismatic priest, but a very powerful priest. But he, his advice was very, you know, I thought it was a silly thing. What is a big deal? You know, I mean, I mean, everybody does this, and you know, there's no. But you know, listening to him, you know, it was amazing. You know, like um, when you listen, and that obedient part, you know. That when you when you obey the little things, that made the difference. You know, it made the difference. I could see, I can sense it now. I can tell you from, I don't know when it happened, probably ten years, fifteen years ago, but I do remember. You know, just he was just saying it like a regular talk, but you know, he said, "Look at Saint John the Baptist." You know, he said uh, there's he quoted the scripture. He said, "You know, he will drink neither wine nor strong drink." He said, "He said try it." You know, he's not. He didn't tell you to do it. He said, try it. And if you see the difference, continue. 
you know, and I, I could see the difference, you know, since uh, I was uh, listened to, you know, my, my goal was listening a priest, you know, who speak the word of the Lord. You know, the angel came to um, Sakaria, but he could not believe and he could not obey. You know, so if you take the words of the priest and obey, seeing that it is from the Lord, and that is where you see the miracles. You know, and I saw that in my life, and I can see that same thing here, that he did not believe, and he said, I am Gabriel. He did not reveal his name before. He, now, when he does, when he says this, I'm an old man. My wife is advanced in years. See, this is our problem. We, we think of practical things. Oh, how is this possible? Not going to work. Too much negatives. We are doubters, not believers. And now he says, now completely, he, he changed his tune. He said, I am Gabriel. See the tone change here. Who stands before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to speak, walk, mm -hmm. unable to talk. Until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. So the good news comes first. So we need to know, is it from the Lord? The problem is, many times we do not know. And instead of receiving the blessing, what do we receive? The curse. And we all do. The Lord speak to us in our hearts. Instead of receiving blessing, what do we receive? The curse. Just like Zachariah, we become stubborn cattle doubtful Christian. The person who put God in a position to make us to believe. Look at what Gabriel is do, doing here. You know, he's, he came with the good news, but we leave with the bad news. We don't want to believe the good news. We are carriers of sad news, bad news, tragic news. So we cannot accept and understand the good news. Let us ask today in a special way, help me to accept the good news when I hear it and receive it in my heart so I can receive the Lord. Because when the message does not come from Gabriel, it comes from the Lord God. Amen. 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 Amen.